In this unit, we've been looking at non-fiction texts, and we've been looking at non-chronological reports in particular. And in today's session, we're going to be learning how to plan a non-chronological report using all those notes that we took in the previous session about barn owls. So let's say someone had never seen a barn owl and didn't know anything about them. What kind of questions might they want to find answers to on a non-chronological report? Pause the video, have a little think, and see how many questions that you could create for someone who knows nothing about barn owls in order for them to learn lots and lots. So pause the video and come back when you're ready to join. So after putting my thinking hat on, I managed to come up with these questions. So, did you think any of these? Did you come up with anything that I've not come up with myself? Have a little look through and think about that. Which questions do you think are going to be best? Are there any questions you think aren't going to be any use at all? So pause the video and come and join me when you're ready. So in our last session, we learnt lots and lots of facts about barn owls. So what facts did you find out about barn owls? Have a little look through your notes and remind yourself about what you've discovered already. And how could we organise all these facts so that they make sense to a reader? So could we group them together in any particular way? Think back maybe to those features of non-chronological reports that we've already had a look at. So pause the video and have a think about those facts that you've already generated and how you could go around organising them to make it easier for your reader to be able to make sense of them and understand. In our last session we looked at the idea of a non-chronological report not being in time order but instead is organised by topic. And what this means is we need to split the information up into paragraphs and each of these paragraphs needs to have its own subheading, as you can see in the example on the screen, which you can also download from the website. So can you identify where the paragraphs are in this report and where the subheadings are? Think about the work you did in the previous session to help. So did you remember correctly? You can see here, highlighted in green, the separate paragraphs, because paragraphs are a collection of one or more sentences and are used to help structure pieces of writing. Now in non-fiction reports like this one, each paragraph is going to discuss a single theme or a single idea, whereas in fiction writing, paragraphs can help separate the action or mark changes in time. We're going to take a quick look at an extract from The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark. And in this text, can you identify where each paragraph starts and ends? And then, if you had to summarise as quickly as possible, what would you say each paragraph is actually about? Pause the video and see whether you can identify those different bits. So, where paragraphs begin and start, and then end, and then what each paragraph is about. Come and join me when you're ready to look at that, what we've done. So here you can see each paragraph is highlighted green with a number alongside it. Because when paragraphs are not separated by subheadings like in our non-chronological reports, they usually start with an indent or going in a little bit in the line to help the reader see where each paragraph starts. Did you notice that when you looked at this text? In reports like our non-chronological report on bats, though, it's helpful to give each sub paragraph a subheading. And this subheading tells the reader what the theme of the paragraph is. So looking at this non-chronological report on bats, can you see how all the facts about what bats eat are in one paragraph, and all the facts about how they fly are in another one? So what subheadings do you think would be helpful in our report on barn owls? Think about the type of subheadings that we have on this text. Now I want you to pause the video for a moment and think about this question. What other features in this report could you use in your own report on the barn owls using that research you created in our last session? So pause the video, have a little think, and come and join me when we're ready to 
recap on the features of our non-chronological report. And here you can see our text marked version of the BATS non-chronological report. And if you plan to include all these features, then you're going to end up with a really clear, interesting report on barn owls. So now let's think about the things that you're going to be including within your plan. You're going to write down what your main heading is going to be. So think about how you can summarise as quickly as possible what your report's actually going to be about. You're going to think about that information you want to include about barn owls. So this might mean going back to yesterday's work and adding some extra information that you thought about or being happy with that research you've already done. You're going to be thinking about what each paragraph is about so that you can actually group that information together in chunks. And you're going to be thinking about what subheadings you can use for these paragraphs or sets of paragraphs to allow the reader to really understand what this information is going to be about. Think about the images that you're going to use in this and where you're going to get them from. Are you going to be drawing them out, printing them from the internet, cutting them from magazines? Think about where you can source these images. And then finally, think about the captions that you're going to use. So the explanations that are going to accompany these images to make what you're trying to get over to the reader really, really clear. So now we've looked at what you're going to be including. Now's the time for us to start planning our text. So you're going to be able to use the template which is on the website to guide you on what to do. So you're going to be thinking about your main heading which will go into the top box and then you've got four different paragraphs that you can include. So think about what facts you're going to include. Two or three facts will be perfect. Write them down as notes so you're not needing to write full sentences and then give them a subheading to explain what that paragraph's about. Then think about a couple of images that you'd like to show and create your caption to explain what these images actually mean so they're ready to fall when you're drafting your non-chronological report. So now we've looked at that, you're ready to begin. But remember, if something new comes into your head, you can still use that even though it wasn't on your original research. Or maybe a question is going to pop into your head that you're going to do a little bit of research about before you start planning. But good luck with this, and I look forward to seeing the different things that you've decided to include in your non-chronological report.